We've been waiting as consumers to have drones enter our lives from uh, personal applications to business applications, enterprise market, military. It hasn't happened yet. At Applied Aeronautics, Ryan, you've addressed those challenges and gotten to the market and gotten some early regulatory approvals. How is Applied Aeronautics different? I think the, the big thing for us and really that differentiated us is we really focused on not only being very versatile, but also our cost, our price. We built a system that was about one-tenth the cost of anything else out there, while being able to fly a long time, able to collect different types of data and things like this. What are the biggest uh, competitive advantages the platform has uh, in your design being end-to-end? -end? Well, it lets us adapt very quickly, I think, is, is a big part of it. So, for instance, our plane breaks down into no piece larger than 40 inches. So it's able to be transported easily. It doesn't need to be put into a truck. It can be put in the back of a car. But at the same time, it needed to be able to be put together very quickly be able to be adapted, modified, things like this. That was one of the really important things that we really saw. No one had really addressed every aspect of it, flying for a long time, being relatively inexpensive, being able to be attained by not just massive companies or even government, but by small startups or schools. And that was really a big thing. And what are the use cases that you're seeing in the immediate future that are gonna have the biggest impact? We're in 55 countries about in, in all seven continents. So we've got planes literally everywhere operating. And, and the one thing that we've seen is that there really is no limit to what can be done. You can start to do other things and look at other things that were never really uh, approached before. So anytime we can take a human out of harm's way, you can't quantify that. That's a big thing. And so we always kind of use this extreme case where if there was a power plant or something radioactive, we could send a plane in, monitor it remotely, and if there was a problem, and, and we've seen in recent years, the plane could be you know, diverted to a specific location where there's no one around and there's no one to get hurt. And even if it's contaminated, it's just there. On that note of uh, safety and public safety, how have you tackled those challenges to get the regulatory approvals you've gotten, which are unique? That is where things like artificial intelligence started to play into uh, not just an important, but a crucial part of it. And what that was is using uh, vision-based systems that have little onboard computers on the plane when they're deployed this way. And they essentially create a situational awareness to know if manned aviation, manned aircraft um, obstacles, it can actually track them and take evasive action if need be. So it can go down, go left, go right, whatever it needs to do, it knows what is in the air and it can make sure it stays out of the way. And that's what led to really the first ever FAA exemption for an aircraft that didn't require not only a ground-based radar, but also visual observers, which has led to commercial applications being able to be done in, in all kinds of different areas. And that's a first for anyone really in the country.